कुंज बिहारी राधा मार वो कुंज बिहारी कोबी जनाबाला गिरिवारारी कोबी जनाबाला गिरिवारारी Yashoda na 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 brother John na Ranjana. Na Yashoda na 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 brother John na Ranjana. Jumuna ki ravana chari. यमुना तीरवाना शरी जय राधा मारवा कुंज बिहारी जय Kunjavihari, Jaya Madhava, Kunjavihari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Yeah, I
Shibada Paramahansa, Parivad Kacharitar, Sri Sri Ma. Tidandi go Shami Shla Esi Bhaktivedanta Shami Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pada Paramahansa, Parivad Kacharitar, Sri 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 Ma. Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Anand Koti Vaishnava Vrindhi Jai. Iskan founder of Charja Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Prem Sakaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindhi Ki Jai. Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gop Gopinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Shri Mayapur Dham Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Jumun Mai Ki Jai Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Granta Raj Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Shri Shri Balaram Purnima Mahamahotsava Ki Jai Shri Baladevi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrindhi Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga All glories to Srila Prabhupada Jai Jai Srila Bhagavad Jai Hare Krishna Let me get this turned off Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate. Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tenth Canto, the second chapter, text thirteen. Garba Sankarsana Tongvai. Prahu Sankarsanam Bhuvi Rameti Lokaram Manad Balabhadram Balochrayat Garva Sankarsanatam Vai Prahu Sankarsanam Bhuvi Rameti Lokaramana Balabhadram Balochrayat Others? Karva Sankarsanatam Vai
ಸಂಕರ್ಷಣಾಥಂ ವೈ ಸಂಕರ್ಷಣ ಭುವಿ ಲೋಕವಮನ ladies sankarshanatham bhavam sankarshanam bhuvi amiti loka ramana alabadram lochaya garba sankarshanat because he will be taken from the womb of devaki to that of rohini tam him rohini nandana the son of rohini vai <coughs> indeed brahu people will call sankarshanam by the name sankarshana bhuvi in the world rama iti he will also be called rama loka ramana because of his special mercy in enabling people in general to become devotees balabhadram he will also be called balabhadra bala uchraya because of extensive bodily strength translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shri prabhupada <clears throat> the son of rohini will also be celebrated as sankarshana because of being sent from the womb of devaki to the womb of rohini he will be called rama because of his, because of his ability to please all the inhabitants of gokula and he will be known as balabhadra because of his extensive physical strength purport These are some of the reasons why Balaram is known as Sankarshan Balaram or sometimes Rama In the Maha Mantra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare People sometimes object when rama is accepted as balaram but although devotees of lord ram may object they should know that there is no difference between balaram and lord ram here shrimad bhagavatam clearly states that balaram is also known as rama rameti therefore it is <coughs> excuse me therefore it is not artificial for us to speak of lord balaram as lord ram jayadev goswami also speaks of three rams parashuram ragupati ram and balaram all of them are ramas ram Shri Balaram ki jai I would like to add two verses to today's class 
from the Chaitanya Charitamrita and attempt to speak uh, in relation to these as well as what we've just spoken. These are from the Chaitanya Charitamrita and this is from Adi Leela, uh, the fifth chapter, verse four. <clears throat> Sarva avatari Krishna Swayam Bhagavan Taradvitya Deha Sri Balaram. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the fountainhead of all incarnations. Lord Balaram is his second body. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Lord Sri Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, is the primeval Lord, the original form of Godhead, and his first expansion is Sri Balaram. The personality of Godhead it ex can expand himself in innumerable forms. The forms that have unlimited potency are called Shamsha, and forms that have limited potency the living entities are called Vivinamsha. And verse 5. Ekahi Swarupa Dahe Bina Matra Kai Adya Kai Vyuha Krishna Leela Sahai. These two are one and the same identity. They differ only in form. Lord Balaram is the first bodily expansion of Krishna and he assists in Lord Krishna's transcendental pastimes. Balaram is a Svamsa expansion, this is purport by Prabhupada. Balaram is a Svamsa expansion of the Lord and therefore there is no difference in potency between Krishna and Balaram. The only difference is in their bodily structure. As the first expansion of Godhead, Balaram is the chief deity among the qu first quadruple forms and he is the foremost assistant of Sri Krishna in his transcendental activities. Sri Krishna Balaram Akija. These verses and today's verse help us to try and understand the identity of Sri Balaram. Sri Balaram's identity is mysterious in some ways. He is Krishna. He is fully Krishna. One difference. What's the difference? He's white. Krishna is. Of course, there's, there are other differences too. He's born a little earlier. There are many we could count other differences, but here, Chaitanya Charitamrita and Srimad Bhagavatam, they draw us to see that there is no difference. These are both the supreme personality of God. Now this is difficult. There's one God, right? I mean, God must be one. One of the common criticisms, you could say, of, of the followers of the Vedas is they worship many gods. I remember we went uh, to the uh, Vatican. How many here have been to the Vatican Museum? Maybe you've been to the Vatican. Anyway, my wife and I have been here. So in the Vatican Museum, there's a section on, you could say, Hinduism or, you know, things that... Are, and they, there's this big, big glass case and there's row after row after row after row of little, little deities. There's Agni and there's Indra and there's Brahma. And they're, they're just, they're just trying to, and there, there's, a, there's, there's millions of these. <laughs> they're trying to make this point. 
we, we in the followers of Jesus, we know there's only one God. And look at these people, they are they're hundreds, thousands of gods. Anything becomes God. And today we see that for some common people, they actually do this. They make anything into God. So, what is it? Is God one? Or is God many? And the Bhagavatam teaches us that God is both one and many. In his oneness, he is not satisfied with one form. Sometimes we, in, in the material world, we're always looking for companionship. We want friends, we want children, we want family, we want lovers. And we were always looking for, for those individuals who will complement us, who will, who will bring the, the, the Two halves becoming one. To be, that's the ideal of relationship. Where two people come together and their, their thoughts, their, their feelings, their, their desires are so complementary that they, they feel like they're just one person. But we're always dissatisfied with that. It never really works out. We try, we, we, we try to find that kind of relationship, but because of our own imperfections and the imperfections in others, there's always something that kind of doesn't work and there's some argument, there's some fight. Because we aren't one. We are two individuals. Krishna also wants companionship. He wants to enjoy. So he himself becomes his own companion. There's no possibility. We, on the other hand, we try to find someone close to us. And sometimes it becomes, you know, pretty good. But here Krishna himself to enjoy, he expands himself. He expands himself. And his first expansion is Balaram. Why, why Balaram? I was thinking about this. Well, what is Balaram's role? What does Balaram do? How does he relate with Krishna? So Balaram, his, he manifests the entire spiritual world. Krishna expands himself as Balaram, and then Balaram expands everything else. Balaram provides a flute. He provides, I, I think he even provides his hair, right? I mean, there's, there's, isn't that somebody who knows better than me? the different paraphernalia, his clothes, his, he provides everything for Krishna to enjoy. And he continues to serve Lord Krishna. I read this morning in a, a, a talk from, from uh, Radhana Swami, Describing how Balaram is unique in that he relates with Krishna in all the five rasas. He relates with Krishna in the Shanta Ras to provide all of the, the arrangements, all the things that Krishna needs. He relates as a servant, serving Krishna. Of course, he relates as a friend. The pastimes of Krishna and Balaram in their friendship. 
are supremely attractive. And we can maybe try to talk some of that when we, if we have the time. And Balaram also has a Vatsalya relationship with Krishna. As his elder brother, often we find Balaram is telling Krishna what to do. It's time to go home. It's time for lunch. And finally, Balaram even has a Madhurya relationship with Krishna. He can't have this Madhurya, is, is not possible in his form as Balaram. He thinks if I were to come close to Krishna when he wants to, he's enjoying with the gopis, it would be very inappropriate. First of all, he may be embarrassed and the gopis certainly would be embarrassed. So instead, Balaram assumes another form as Ananga Manjari, the younger sister of Radharani. And in that form, he assists again in the sweet conjugal leelas of Sri Krishna. So Balaram has this, this life, this, this relationship with Krishna to serve him in all different aspects. He goes on to serve Krishna in this world. Balaram then expands himself. <laughs> we have Krishna expanding himself as Balaram and now Balaram, he's going to expand himself. He expands himself as Mahasankrashan and then the Chaturvyuha and he then he expands himself into this world. He's expanding and expanding. He's, he's entering everything. Why? To serve Krishna. So Balaram is Krishna's first full expansion of him himself to complement, to complement his enjoying mood with that which facilitates his enjoyment. And then, of course, he expands as Srimati Radharani for another aspect of his enjoyment. So we see Krishna and Balaram, and we understand that they are one, and yet they are different. And especially, we relate with Balaram as our Adi Guru as our original teacher. As our teacher, in that same talk, Radha Swami, and I, this I am not sure where this is described, but he, he, he spoke about how Balaram carries a plow. And he spoke about how what do we use a plow for? We use the plow to, to get ready the earth so that it can receive the seeds. So with the plow, Guru, as the representative of Baladev, with that energy, tills the dry earth of our hearts. We have within this, a soil which has become dried and caked and hard like stone. We know actually this happens. Earth, you leave earth long enough, what happens to it? It becomes stone. 
the stone of the, the earth that we dig down and we find was once earth, but compacted and molded, it's become stone. So similarly, our soil, the soil of our, our inner being has been compacted, compacted, dried up, borne down with the heavy load of our material desire till it becomes like rock. And yet the plow of Balaram can break it up through Gurudev so that we can receive the seeds of devotion, of bhakti. So we relate with Balaram as our Adi Guru, as our teacher. He teaches us through our spiritual masters and he teaches us directly by his own relationship with Krishna about the mood of service. Of course, sometimes Balaram's Leela takes another turn we find that Balaram sometimes disagrees with Krishna. And then things get interesting. In the Bhagavatam, we find how Balaram from time to time had an argument with Krishna. He argued over the marriage of Subhadra. And then he argued over the battle of Kurukshetra. He was, he had some affection for Duryodhana. And he also felt why we have to have this huge fight. He decided to even go on a, to leave Dwarka, go out on pilgrimage. And in that pilgrimage, he taught a few, few lessons especially when he met up with Ramaharshan Sutta in Naimasharanya. Very interesting pastime. There we see a, 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 an example of the, the strength. This, this uh, verse describes that we, we know Balaram as Balabhadra because of his extraordinary strength. And this was demonstrated when in the assembly of Naimasharanya simply by touching a piece of grass <laughs> on the head of Ramaharshan Sutta, he was killed. There we see an example of the danger of not recognizing Balaram as the Supreme Personality. Ramaharshan Sutta thinking it was proper because he was sitting on a seat like this, he had been put there by the assembled Brahmins. And the rule is that the one who is sitting on the asana, because it's a seat of Vyas, he is given all respect by everyone. He's not supposed to get up. But that doesn't include God <laughs> entering into the assembly. And for us, it would not include uh, many senior devotees. I couldn't imagine myself sitting here and Srila Prabhupada entering the room and I would just sit there. Oh, well, you know, I'm on the asana, you know, <laughs> so I'm not supposed... No, of course, I would immediately get up and fall down. So, Balaram teaches us. He teaches us through our gurus. He teaches us directly. And we associate with him. In our, particularly in his appearance as Sri Nityananda. This part of Adi Lila that I just read is prefacing 
the description of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. And we worship Balaram every day in that form. But this particular verse also tells us that we are worshiping Balaram in our chanting. When we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Balaram is present in his name there as well. Now it's very interesting that some people will object. Prabhupada brings attention to this that wait a minute, the Maha Mantra is not talking about Balaram. For most people, my understanding is that the Maha Mantra, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but for most people, they, they, they interpret it that Hare is Hari. Because Hare is a way to address Hari. And Krishna is Krishna, and Rama is Ramachandra. Am I correct? I mean, someone who's more scholarly? That's what I've understood. That that's the more common definition of the Hare Krishna mantra is Hari, Krishna, and Rama, or Ramachandra. Now the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they have another definition. They say that Hare is Hara, is Radharani. That Krishna is Krishna, and that Rama is also Krishna, as Radharaman. And we're, here we have Rama as Lord Balaram. I've had some difficulty with this, and maybe someone here can, can help me out, because we generally don't associate Hare as Radha with Rama as Balaram. So when we chant Hare Rama, anyway, if anyone here <laughs> has some reference, my only uh, conclusion is that when we chant Hare Rama and we are thinking of Rama as Balaram, then we're, we're, the Hare becomes Hari. But anyway, that's my conjecture. But here clearly Prabhupada says that yes, that Balaram is present in the Maha Mantra. And that this verse supports it because this verse describes that Balaram will be known as Rama, Ram Eti. So we are associating with Balaram in every day in so many ways. We associate with Balaram to in some ways when we chant the holy names. We associate with Balaram, especially when we worship Nityananda, and we associate with Balaram through the mercy of our spiritual masters, who are all his representatives. So today we have the great fortune to honor and worship and celebrate his appearance. This verse describes how Balaram appeared in a very unusual way. That he first appears in the womb of Devaki. Now in, in another part where Srila Prabhupada uh, talks about this, it's, he goes a little bit more into the detail about how the field of Devaki's womb is purified by the first six children who are actually demonia qualities, who represent demonia qualities, Kroda and Loba and Matsarya. But all of these things are flushed out. And then finally, like his Balaram's service, he prepares the field, he creates the environment, he sets it all up. So he sets up the womb of Devaki for Krishna to appear. 
and in order to enjoy his pastimes with Krishna and by the order of Lord Krishna by the power of Yoga Maya he enters the womb of Rohini and there he's born this day in the full moon of Shravan in Gokula where is anyone know specifically is he where he's born in what is it called uh, in Gokula there's a where Balaram is born who knows anyone yes huh Dauji, right? Dauji is the place he's born, isn't it? That's what I thought, right? There's a beautiful temple of, of Balaram and Dauji, established by um, Vir Virabhadra, right? Vir anyway, Krishna's grandson. Beautiful temple. So Dauji's born there as the son of Rohini. I guess it must be a year earlier. Or is it just a few weeks earlier? Is it, it's a year earlier. No, it must be. Who knows exactly? I haven't, I searched, I couldn't, but that's my, am I correct? One year earlier? <laughs> no one knows. I, I, I look for a, you know, exact, you know, is it, it's one, is it one year earlier or how, anyhow, I'm, Hare Krishna, one year, we'll, we'll just go with one year. <laughs> it's before. <laughs> He's elder and I'm pretty sure it's more than two weeks older. So he's born as the elder brother and from the very beginning he's attached to Krishna. They're inseparable. They enjoy so many childhood pastimes together. From time to time Balaram kills some demons too. They have so many different relationships. So today we can take advantage hear more again and again about the pastimes of Lord Balaram. Remember our relationship with him. Try to enter into the uh, to the mood of becoming pure servants in the assist, assisting Balaram in his service to Sri Krishna. So, as we could go on, but time is getting short. Uh, perhaps there's some other comments, questions. We can talk about Sri Balaram. Anyone like to add something? Yes, Prabhu. Is there a microphone where I can hear? Oh, before you do that, I wanted to, to, to uh, share with you something that uh, in case you, this is, this is something really, this is kind of interesting. And most of you probably have not heard this. Some of you from India might have heard this or who are really scholarly. Anyway, there's, I was researching, trying to prepare for this class and I went to, uh, one of the standard sources of all information in the world, Wikipedia. <laughs> and not exactly Bhagavatam, but anyway, mostly I was going to Vanipedia. Vanipedia was, is, is the go-to place you really actually want true <laughs> information, then go to Vanipedia. But if you want to know what the world thinks, you can go to Wikipedia. 
And I found something interesting. I said there was a little little sentence there was saying saying something about how in the Adi Parva, the real you know source of why Krishna is white and why excuse me, Balaram is white and Krishna is black is revealed. And I said, well, that's curious. I'd never heard that. I'd be curious to know what that is. So I, uh, so I was, tried to find it out and then gradually I searched. And then I found that there is some statement in Puranas and various places that it's something like Sita Krishna Kleshao. Sita meaning white, Krishna meaning black, Kleshao meaning hair or could mean hair. This is what I found out by, uh, after I read further. So there's a common idea that, that when the demigods approach uh, Vishnu, that he responds saying, by pulling out two hairs from his head, and one is white, <laughs> which gives you a clue to how this is a bogus idea, and the other is black, and it said that the white hair becomes Balaram and the black hair becomes Krishna. So this fits in with the whole idea that Vishnu is the source of all incarnations and that Krishna is an avatar of Vishnu. Right? So it fits in to the kind of the idea that many followers of Hinduism figure out. So apparently now this has been commented on. I thought this is, this is curious. I'd never heard this. <laughs> but I guess it was quite a, uh, it has been and maybe is still a popular notion in, in common people. And it was at the time of Jiva Goswami because he talks about it in the Krishna Sandarbha apparently. And he described, well, no, this is not the right, the right uh, translation. This is not the right meaning of klesha. Klesha means something. I, mean, I can't remember all the ways in which he and Sridhar Swami, they all take this and they tear it, they turn it apart and they say, no, <laughs> this is not the way it is. It's Krishna who expands himself. It's Krishna appearing as Krishna. It's Krishna and Balaram. Balaram appearing as Balaram. It's not Vishnu incarnating himself as Krishna and Balaram. And the white and the black referred to different quality. Anyway, it's a, it's a long thing if you want to. I, I, I didn't remember it all. <laughs> but, uh, but no. Uh, it's not. And the giveaway is since when does God have white hair? I mean, you know, <laughs> he's ever youthful. <laughs> he doesn't get white hair. Maybe as a Dvaita Acharya, he, he gets white hair. Ah, he gets a Srivatsa. Okay, Srivatsa is white. Hare Krishna. So anyway, that was just an interesting little addition that you might... Uh, so if you run across anybody who has that misconception, just point them into the... Uh, Jiva Goswami's uh, Sandarvas and, and Sridhar Swami. They both comment on this. I think Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, they all comment. It, it became, a, I guess it was a big thing in, the, in those days and probably still is a misconception. So that's one misconception too. Yeah. Hare Krishna. So you had a question, yes. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you for a nice class. The, you say Balaram represents Adi Guru. So here we see that Durjodhana was personifies the irreligiosity so much immoral activities. I'm saying those are against the body. So how then Balaram have a, a Balaram support Durjodhana? Or, or well, how do we see it? I take great hope from this that if Balaram can teach Duryodhana then uh, I also may be able to get taught by Gurudev. Balaram had friendship with Duryodhana but he never supported Duryodhana's position as in enmity with Krishna. He simply wanted peace. He wanted to avoid the battle. He wanted things to be... And Duryodha had many good qualities in other respects. But he had this in his heart. 
So I can only say that uh, this is Balaram's mercy. That Balaram is merciful. That's described here. This is this verse itself says uh, it says here something about ah he will also be called Rama and then the he, the verse says Loka Ramanad because of his special mercy in enabling people in general to become devotees. So Balaram has this special mercy, Loka Ramanat, to enable people in general, Duryodhana, others, to become devotees. So I can only understand it as his special mercy. And his pastime, his Leela, perhaps someone else has some more esoteric answer to this question? I, I don't know. But uh, on, the, on the, you know, my immediate thought is, well, first of all, he's independent. Balaram is independent. He can do whatever he likes. Uh, so if he has friendship, of course, he, had, he taught both Bhima and Duryodhana. They both were the students of Balaram in the art of club fighting. So this is all on one side is also a lila. Yes, Ru. Is can you because I can't really hear you and no one else can. <laughs> Testing. Okay. I've never heard anybody um, go into the significance of Rukmi being killed. And Rukmi was a very interesting character because he approached the battlefield of Kurukshetra and was not allowed. He approached both sides and tried to join. And Krishna said, no, we don't need you here. And he had a very special bow. He was, you know, on a par with Abhimanyu and Karna and everyone. And later, uh, Balaram kills him. And I was wondering if there's some significance oh. because his father's that? name is Bhishmaka. And the whole story of Mahabharata, the whole Dwarka Leela is really glorifying Bhishma. Bhishmaka, yeah. is a, there's, there's a symmetry. But I've never heard anyone speak about it. Well, that whole family has a lot of very interesting <laughs> connections, Rukmi and Rukmini. And so... That seems to me, to, I can only say that it's a wonderful Leela, but otherwise I'd have no, 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 no idea. Any other questions or comments about Sri Balaram? Jai Baladeva Ki Jai Balaram Jayanti Ki Jai.